had conversations with thousands of songwriters of all levels of experience, and it turns out there is one massive challenge that is totally universal to all songwriters all over the place. So today we want to talk to you about the biggest challenge in songwriting. And more importantly, we want to talk to you about ways to deal with this challenge, techniques, tools, methods to get through the biggest challenge you'll face in songwriting. But before we dive in, we do want to let you know something very exciting. If you are a songwriter looking to take your songwriting skills to the next level, if you want access to exclusive content that we create, exclusive videos, PDFs, eBooks, mini courses that we're creating, as well as monthly live feedback sessions with Benny and I, we have started a Patreon page. And for as little as $3 a month, you can join that page for that exclusive content, discounts to all our workshops. So please check that out. The link is in the video notes. Okay, so let's jump in right now and we don't need to dilly dally, let's name it. The single biggest challenge in songwriting is second verse hell. It is writing your first verse, writing your first chorus and then not knowing where to go from there. This is a feeling that every songwriter we talk to has experienced. That feeling of getting halfway through the song, everything's going well, you're excited, plenty of dopamine because you've come up with a new idea and then it all comes crashing down. Yeah, and you start with this great idea, you're inspired, you have this wonderful coalescence of like a great worthy idea, some great lines of lyric, oh, and you've set it to melody and it sounds really great. Oh my God, and you also wrote an incredible chorus. And oh my God, I might actually be a songwriter or maybe a really good songwriter. And then you crash and burn in a pit of fiery despair because you can't write the stupid second verse. Not to overdramatize it, but that's how it feels <laughs> it's every how, time. <laughs> that's how it feels. And so we want to talk to you today about, first of all, why this happens. Yeah. Why is it that so consistently the second verse creates this problem, this enormous challenge? And then we want to talk about all the different ways you can overcome this challenge, knowing it's going to be there, knowing it's going to always be part of the songwriting process. And it's not even exclusive to songwriting. No. I mean, this is an experience that is part of any kind of creative project that kind of starts out in a flurry of inspiration, basically. Mm. Um, and there's a really beautiful graphic representation of this, which I actually discovered in the book, Still Like an Artist by mm. Austin Kleon, um, that he borrowed from a woman mm. called Maureen McHugh. So mm. we want to show you that graph now. And this is a beautiful graph. It represents a song, it represents a creative process. And I heard Austin Kleon actually present this in LA. Mm. He sort of put it up on the whiteboard and everyone sort of laughed at it. And then the laughter became more nervous as everyone realized this was their life. Yeah, exactly. And so the diagram starts with, this is the greatest idea we've ever had. Yeah, totally. Because it's new. Yes, and I think that you're in that space as a songwriter when you've written that first verse and the chorus. It feels like this is the best idea ever and I might actually be a serious proper songwriter. Yeah, and so that elation of that initial you know, idea. Quickly disintegrates. Slides. Slides down this slope of despair. So the next stage on the slope of despair is, yeah, it's harder than I thought, but it's still good. And to me as a songwriter, that's like, all right, I'm not sure where I'm gonna go with this, but I know that this is a good song. Mm. Feels like the honeymoon period is quickly over mm. as we're starting to slide. And so then we find ourselves in this position of, okay, this is gonna take some work. And then when things don't work out as you want them to, and particularly with a song that starts out so well, I think a little fear can kick in. Like anything I do is gonna be mediocre and any idea that I have is not gonna fulfill the potential mm. of this idea. And I think we're getting pretty close to the dark night of the soul, which is really this like valley mm. of despair yeah. or, or what, the you know, swamp the of swamp despair. of despair, yeah. which is right at the bottom of this V curve. Yeah. Um, and a lot of songwriters give up there. And this is one of the big challenges, right? Mm. That we have mm. encountered with a lot of our students mm. and, mm. and mm. colleagues. This second verse hell is arguably the biggest reason songs don't get finished. It's arguably the biggest reason you have that folder overflowing with half finished material. And really our job is to provide you with a few tools and strategies and techniques to climb out the other side and mm. actually finish something. Mm. And usually when you climb out the other side, you do get to the top of that other little side of the V, which is like, it's done and it sucks. Maybe it doesn't actually suck, you know, but I like that idea in this graphic. It's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be in the swamp of despair. And I would just add that even though the line out the other side is not as high as the original starting point, I think there are times when we find the finished product as a beautiful thing and more than we could have imagined or hoped for. Mm. 
Okay, so let's jump into the different reasons that second verse hell happens, and most importantly, ways you can deal with it. So the very first reason why people get stuck is very simply because you started the song at the end, not at the beginning. And a really, really important thing to hold in your mind as a songwriter is just because you wrote it first, doesn't necessarily mean that it's the first verse. If you have started a song from this really excited place and you have this big idea or a big emotion or something really exciting to put on the page, it actually makes sense that that's not the first verse because you've put your big idea right up the top, which is to say you sort of set off the midnight fireworks before actually having the picnic, drinking a glass of champagne, watching the 9 p.m. fireworks, and then setting off the midnight fireworks later. So you don't want to set off the midnight fireworks in your first verse. So what is the solution to this problem? Mm. Okay, the first solution is to use a song map. A song map is almost like an essay plan. It's taking a step back and having a sort of meta look at your song, planning it out, beginning, middle and end, right? Looking at where it starts, how it develops and where it's ultimately going to climax or culminate to. You simply play this game with yourself. You say, okay, if this verse and chorus that I've written and I'm stuck on, if it isn't the first verse, and let me for a moment pretend that it's actually the second verse or third verse, then work backwards. What needs to come before this idea in order that I actually reach that conclusion or that development later on in the song? So another big reason second verse hell happens is because you've said everything you need to say in the first verse. Yeah, there is actually nowhere else to go because you've put the entire story yeah. into the first verse. Yeah, and a really nice way to think about this visually is think about a TV series. Think about your favorite show. Think about how it would feel if at the end of the first ep, you knew everything about all mm. the characters. Mm. There were no questions left to answer. Mm. Why would you continue watching the series? Mm. So I want to give you an example of this from a little dummy lyric that I mocked up. So here it is. The summer sun kissed you on the other cheek, but shadows crept into your eyes until you were all closed doors and missed calls without so much as a final goodbye. Now, this is a reasonably evocative lyric. Like I wrote it to be, you know, not a crap lyric. It's okay. It's nice. It sort of tells a story. It's got interesting language. I would really struggle to take this lyric any further. And one of the reasons for this is if we actually take this lyric and break it down in terms of what each line represents as a plot point in a story, what you can see is that these four lines actually tell the entire story from start to finish. So the summer sun kissed you on the other cheek. So this is basically saying the relationship is going well, or to me, that's what the imagery was meant to kind of convey, right? But shadows crept into your eyes. All right, well, something is starting to go downhill until you were all closed doors and missed calls. Okay, the relationship has basically broken down without as much as a final goodbye. Well, the other person has left, right? So now we can actually see, looking at that understory, that in four lines, the relationship was going great to the point where the relationship is completely over and mm. someone isn't even returning this person's calls, mm. right? So it's too much story in four lines. So I call this kind of verse a plot clot, which is to say it's too full of narrative, it's too full of stuff. Mm. But it's actually a really good problem to have mm. because if we break these four lines apart, mm. well, each of these four lines could be a heading in a song map to its own section. Mm. So I could actually write an entire verse mm. about the relationship looking great. Mm. Mm. And I might introduce in the last line that idea of, okay, a shadow is creeping in. And just like that TV series idea, right? That's like mm. the hanger. Mm. That's painting a really nice picture and then introducing a little bit of tension or conflict or problem. Mm. And that then drives us into the second verse where I could then actually describe the shadows, right? So the whole second verse could be the beginnings of the breakdown. And then the final verse could actually be missed calls and closed doors and you've completely mm. disappeared, right? So you can actually see that this, these four lines contain mm. a summary of a more complete song. If I actually, instead of trying to go shallow and wide in my lyric writing, go narrow but deep. Another reason second verse hell happens is Quite simply, you're not sure what you're trying to say. You're not really clear on what the story is that you're trying to tell. And 
We so often write a song where we have an idea, an initial spark, and we get to work and it feels great, it feels exciting. The challenge is getting into that second verse phase and realizing that we're not sure where we wanted the story to go. Mm. We're not sure what the point is we're trying to make. We're not sure if you know there's somewhere we want to arrive at. And so we get stranded, much like we would get stranded if we set off in our car without a specific destination we want to get to. And often that might be because you've gotten a really cool kind of rhyming couplet or something, mm, or there's mm. this really compelling image, mm. the words sound great and you've written it down and it kind of feels like it means something. <laughs> or it should be a great song. Yeah. It feels like it just should write itself. You know? yeah. Aaron Sorkin talks about this on Masterclass and Aaron Sorkin's really well known for writing in film and TV. He created The Social Network, Moneyball, West Wing. And he has this lovely concept where he talks about not confusing an idea with a story. Mm -hmm. And the example he gives is someone comes to him and says, I love surfing. I want to make a film about surfing. And he's like, great. We know where to park the trucks on location. You don't have a story. <laughs> and a story needs to be, you know, there's a guy who's the world champion and the event is in two days and he dislocates his knee. And now it's a race against time to get ready for the event so he can complete his dream, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Only then do you have a story. So mm. when you start writing a song and you've got this lovely idea, we need to make sure we're not confusing that for a story with all these other components in it that make mm. it interesting. Story is where there is an intention mm. and an obstacle. Mm. And I would say mm. that that is also the essence of great songs, even great love songs. Mm. Look, you could write a love song that's just like, you're so fantastic, yeah. right? I love all these things about you. Yeah. But even a love song that says, you are so fantastic. How lucky am I? What would I do? if I didn't have you. Mm. To me, there is a essence there mm. of the conflict mm. of imagining mm. what that loss would be like mm. is how you take a story further. Mm. And to simplify that idea of intention and obstacle, we can really think of it as you want something and there's something stopping you getting it. Mm. And so you get stuck in your second verse. We have to look at what it is you want. Mm. What do you or your characters want in this story you've created? and what is holding them back? Mm. What is stopping them getting that thing? So let's talk about some solutions where mm. you can take something that might be an initial idea mm. and actually turn it into a full idea. Yeah, so one of the most effective ways I think of tackling this is to abandon song form. Forget <laughs> your writing songs. Yeah. Forget your trying to structure it in verses and choruses and use rhyming couplets. Forget all of that. Say it out loud. Tell it like a story as if a friend has asked you down the pub what happened mm -hmm. and see how it flows. And you'll find very quickly that when you're not trying to make it fit into these parameters of song form, you tell it like you would tell any other story. Mm. And when we talk about saying it out loud, that can take a number of forms, right? Like that might actually be just speaking it into an iPhone or a voice recorder. Mm. And you mm. might even end up writing some really good lyrics. Yeah. If you just say it out loud and don't censor yourself, just tell the story from yeah. start to finish. Yeah. Another way that you might do it is writing, right? Just writing long form if you're not going to speak it out loud. Mm. So I might do some more structured writing when I'm fleshing out an idea. But if I do hit this moment where I'm like, I'm not actually even sure what this idea is or what the story is or where this is going to go, I will just do free writing, mm. you know, and just start be telling a story. And sometimes it's also like, what does this mean? Where did this come from? Mm. Go back in time, go forward in time, mm. right? Just writing it out long form. Mm. And it might also involve calling a friend, yeah. right? If you've got access to mm. someone who mm. is willing to listen to you talk yeah. this through. Essentially any way to verbalize it or get it out of your system. So it's not trapped in your head, mm -hmm. struggling to find its place in the song. So one final reason why your song might be getting stuck in the swamp of despair in second verse hell is because the chorus that you've written, if you've gotten to a chorus, isn't actually a chorus. It's not expressing the idea of your song in such a way that can be re 
colored or reframed. So we want to show you an example of a song that Benny and I actually wrote yesterday for a different video, a video about using loops to generate song ideas. But what was cool about writing that song is we started with a lyrical prompt and it turned out that that lyrical prompt ended up as the last line of the chorus. And one of the reasons we liked it as a chorus lyric was because the lyrics themselves contain the key into the second verse. So let's take a look at the lyric. So this song started with the expression for the love of strangers. We were kind of really entering this world of like, what does it mean to be involved in something where you're doing something for the love of strangers? So the whole first verse started with some lyrics that were really describing the feeling of kind of being on a stage. And so once we'd written those, we then got to the chorus. So we initially started writing this in a somewhat linear manner. And to me, I sort of thought, well, actually, what if it's not just about, you know, trying to please people with small acts of, you know, performance, um, that it's actually complete self-destruction, you know, like complete self-sacrifice or, you know, I'm willing to just humiliate myself mm. completely mm. for the love of strangers, mm. that, that the chorus really represents almost the end point, mm. right? And to me, this image of fire and flames came up. So it ended up being more of a metaphor-based mm. mm. chorus lyric, mm. right? It's like, I burn the house down to the ground. The reason why when we landed on this concept, I was like, this is going to work. This works as a chorus because it actually provides options for the second verse. Because mm. we were also writing under pressure. You know, we, we got stuck at the second verse totally. like we always do. But, you know, it was great because we found a way through. We found a way out of the swamp. Yes. So then the conversation opened up with what is the second verse going to be about? And we actually brainstormed a few ideas, right? We brainstormed, okay, mm. what are some acts of self-sacrifice? What are mm. some acts of humiliation? Mm. But the key thing that I really want to summarize here is that writing that chorus itself contained possibilities for where the second verse might go. Mm. So one of the kind of helpful practical tips here, I hope, is the idea of actually finding chorus lyrics that express that central kind of peak emotion and in doing so actually provide you with options for how you might actually intensify or escalate that initial problem. Mm. Once the chorus was there and it set that tone, it allowed us to do the second verse the way we did it. Exactly. Second verse hell is a universal challenge. You are not alone. And it is not a personal failing when you're there. It's actually just part of the natural creative process of writing mm. a song. And our hope in this video was to really break down some of the reasons we get there and obviously to provide you with some tools and strategies, methods and processes for climbing out of the swamp. So happy songwriting. Please leave us some comments and suggestions for new videos. We love to read them and we'll see you soon. Bye.